you know, I come from a football family. And one of the greatest things I remember from my childhood is sitting in the living room with my brother and watching tapes upon tapes, videos upon videos of highlight reels from different college teams playing football. My dad had a whole closet, you know, full of these tapes. And we just pull out Baylor, Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, uh, USC, um, and pop those things in. And anytime before we went out to play in the backyard, or even before we even went out to play in like, in Friday nights before high school games, we'd come home and watch these tapes. And they'd get us pumped up for, for the game. Mm -hmm. And we watched these tapes, I mean, until they practically melted in the VCR. Uh, <laughs> and we watched them over and over because we wanted to be that good. We, we wanted to play like that. We wanted to be like those players. We wanted to make the same long passes and possible catches, all the spin moves, the tackles. You know, those tapes helped us remember how fun playing football could be. And if we allowed them to, they could change the way we played the game. Um, random thought, uh, we were watching Whiplash, movie Whiplash on Friday night. And the minute it was over, I heard Tommy say, I gotta play the drums. <laughs> We have a lot of motivators like this in our lives, things that help us remember. So today's gospel was um, Mark's version of the Transfiguration. And for me, this, this gospel has always been like a really good spiritual wake-up call. It's sort of the highlight reel par excellence of Christianity, of our journey with the Lord, right? Jesus gives the disciples, Peter, James, and John, a glimpse of his glory. He gives it to them in order to strengthen them, to motivate them, to help them to remember, to help them listen, to remember what a relationship with Jesus means, fullness of life, eternal joy, that we're going to share in his glory forever. Luke's Gospel says that Peter, Peter James, and John were fully awake. I love those that term, fully awake. So this was, there's no mistake, if this is, it wasn't a dream, I mean it was, not meant to be dismissed or forgotten in our lives. Ironically, uh, one of my Lenten practices, or my, part of my Lenten reading, has been uh, Pope Francis's Christmas letter uh, to the Vatican bureaucracy. Uh, uh, Bob McCreary and uh, our provincial David sort of had mentioned that before, and uh, so it piqued my interest. And if you've read it, uh, you, I mean, uh, Pope Francis is describing all these spiritual ills that are plaguing the church. And um, the one right now that's really striking a chord with me is this spiritual Alzheimer's. If you read about this. So this is what he says about spiritual, spiritual Alzheimer's. Spiritual Alzheimer's consists in losing the memory of our personal salvation history. Our past history with the Lord and our first love. We see it in those who have lost the memory of their encounter with the Lord, in those who no longer see life's meaning in Deuteronomic terms, in those who are completely caught up in the present moment, in their passions, and whims, and obsessions, in those who build walls and routines around themselves and thus become more and more the slaves of idols carved by their own hands. That's a big ouch for me. <laughs> Back to the Transfiguration. Peter doesn't want the experience to end. He's caught up in the present moment, wanting to build tents in order to dwell in the comfortable silence and glory that involves no going down the mountain, no Jerusalem, no cross. Why suffer the cross when the glory is right here? That quickly, that quickly, spiritual Alzheimer's can set in. And I can very much relate. It's so easy, I think, for a lot of us to get caught up in the comfortable, to bend every passion and appetite and mood that, that life throws at us, build up our own tents to block out the world, and keep whatever glory we have from our encounter with Christ, whatever we have left, we keep it to ourselves. Contrary to what Peter may have thought, this is not a remembering, it's a forgetting. It's a forgetting where Jesus has called, 
how Jesus called Peter first, what he's calling him to right now, and what he's calling him to in the future. And the voice from the clouds that overshadows the apostles, it's a powerful reminder, this is my beloved son, listen to him. So Lent is becoming my time to listen and remember, to go through those highlight reels of my encounters with Jesus. Whether in the silence of meditation or the hustle and bustle of ministry and school, to watch them in my mind, in my heart, over and over and over again. To see and hear things that I've never quite grasped the first time around. I'm trying to make those moments of grace become my motivation to go deeper with Jesus. To reverse my own spiritual Alzheimer's. Fears and self-doubts, frustrations and my own sins. I mean, all, all that needs to be left on the mountain. Just like they'd be left in my living room after my brother and I watched all those tapes. We'd go out and play, feeling like we were superstars. <laughs> so this is the call, I think, for me this life, is to let the memories, let the memories of grace transfigure me and motivate me to love Christ with everything I have and to remember that the Easter glory awaits us.